Hello Internet, welcome back to our tutorial Let's Play. Uh, in the last episode, we... I don't know what that sound was. Uh, we crafted ourselves a spike on a stick, which is going to fee, you know, be our main weapon as we progress. We did talk about how it is flimsy, and so I would be tempted to make a backup version of this weapon as well. But that's not for right this second, so we're going to do that in the future. Uh, for now, I want to make our current like shelter a little bit more livable. So we're going to need some things as we progress in the game. One thing we're going to need is the ability to cook. Uh, so we're going to need a fire keeping, uh, something to contain the fire. Otherwise, we will burn down our building. We're going to need a healthy supply of wood, which we have. And I thought we would also talk about the sorting menu, although that probably should be its own episode. So this one might be short. In this episode, we're going to gather up some wood and we're going to talk about fire containment, uh, which is boring, I know. So first and foremost, when you go around smashing things, you really don't want to be smashing with an item that is flimsy. So instead of smashing with that, why don't we grab a plank? I'd rather use a plank than the pipe, because currently the pipe is our um, is our only hammering item. So I'd rather not damage that either. So we're going to gather up some wood. Best way to gather up wood, smash wooden objects. Uh, again, this is much better when you actually have an item with a high bash value. So a bash of 10 is acceptable. It uh, is bash plus your current strength, which we can check in the at menu, uh, is 12. So 12 plus the 10 means we have a 22. As long as the tile we're smashing has a lower, I don't know, we'll just call it durability than 22, then it will be potentially smashed. If we come over here and smash the wall a couple times, it'll give us a message saying, hey, you're not, or it won't, and we'll run out of stamina. It should say we're not damaging, there we go. You don't seem to be damaging the white wall. So that's one way of knowing uh, whether you can possibly do it. If it does not say you don't seem to be damaging it, then there is at least a one point difference and you can still potentially smash that item. It might take you 600 tries, but you can potentially smash the item. So for now, we're just gonna smash some things and gather up wood. This is a pretty frequent thing that I do uh, around my bases because I tend to do everything by fire for a long period of time. And again, we're gonna rest anytime that our stamina gets low. It's very important that we don't get winded. So we're gonna rest in between smashes. Smash, smash, smash. So this is something that we do frequently. This is because we need firewood for uh, our fire. We use fire to herd crunch, yes. Stop catching your breath from the west and below. So that is uh, in the prison, which is not concerning. So we'll go ahead and wait, get our breath back. Now, the way we can gather this up is using hauling. Hauling is the backslash key. This is the key that occupies the same key on the keyboard as the vertical pipe or the, horse, or the vertical line, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's usually around your enter key, although different keyboard layouts will have it at slightly different positions. So we're going to press that and you'll see it says there are no items to haul here. We need to be on top of a tile that has items on it. And when we do that, your hands are not free, which makes hauling slower, which is fine. When we do that, it will automatically take all objects beneath us. And when we move, it will move them all with us. Now, the really important thing here is that you don't do this when there are enemies nearby because a lot of time will pass and you don't have the opportunity to react, right? So as we move forward, you'll see uh, only a few seconds pass. As we accumulate more items, it will increase the time it takes. So we're at 0.45, now we're at 0.5. We're at 0.5, now we're at 0.7. Now we're going about eight seconds every movement, and by the time we gather up all these materials, each tile is now taking us about 23 seconds. So that, you know, that time accumulates as you gather more stuff. So we'll just gather that wood. Now we're gonna need a fire containment of some sort. This can be an issue in the shelter. It's one of the only hurdles that you really have to face when you start in the evac shelter start. Most houses contain an oven and you can just place wood into the oven and start a fire there and that is perfectly fine. That is a fire container. Some basements have uh, furnaces which can be used as a safe fire container but 
Nothing like that exists in the evac shelter. You'll see all we have are these toilets. Um, and so if we just drop wood somewhere, let's pick up our matchbook and we activate our matchbook to start a fire and we just select this tile and set it on fire, it's going to spread, right? We're in a wooden building. You know, all this flooring is wood. The benches are wood. I'm flammable. This guy is flammable. Everything in here will catch on fire. Now, it won't really spread beyond that because of depending on what walls there are, fire doesn't spread very easily through walls. But the doors will burn, the curtains will burn, all this stuff will burn down. And so it's really important that you only ever start a fire in a safe contained area. Now, I've been told that you can build them in pits. So if we use our construction menu, which is the asterisk key, which is over the eight, so shift eight key um, by default. We'll bring up a construction menu. We can dig a pit, I believe is what it's called. No, dig. Dig downstairs. Really, you can't hole. Used to be pits. I guess uh, we're pits removed from the game. I don't know now. Requires a pit. Well, how do I make a pit? It's interesting. Uh, well, whatever. Not, not something I need to worry about. Because we're not going to do that. But apparently, you can dig a deep pit. So dig a pit and then widen it to be a deep pit. Uh, used to be how you could do that. I don't know if that's still in the game or not. The other alternative that we have is to build something that can contain a fire safely. So we could build, like say we only wanted light, we could build a, a kiln or something that when we fire it up would produce a small bit of light. Um, but mostly we want something we can cook on. And the best option for that is called a brazier, uh, a B-R-A-Z-I-E-R. -E so if we search our crafting menu, you'll see that it does not exist. And the reason it's not here is because our skills are not high enough to actually make this. So what we're going to do is grind up our fabrication. Um, and this is something that you just kind of have to know. It's one of those things you can search the item browser for items like this. But so many people use braziers that it really does become second nature. I believe it requires fabrication of one. So we're going to try to grind our fab. Well, how do we know what our fab is? We go in the at menu which uh, I should really make a video on the app menu, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Well, that's not a problem for right now. And we look in our crafting skills, you'll see our fab is zero, and we're 22% of the way to level one, and that's because we've crafted other things. So we're really quickly going to grind up our fab. The best way to do this is to go into our crafting menu, which we've talked about how to use, search, and we're gonna go P colon fab, and this will list everything that requires fabrication and we'll level up our fabrication. And we're looking for something that is at our level or above, otherwise it won't give us experience. Now at level zero, we can make anything and it's gonna level us up as long as it uses fab. If we're level one, all of these zero fab recipes, they won't level us up anymore. Only one or better will level us up. The easiest thing to make is the fish hooks, but we're gonna be using lock picks in the future, so we might as well make some of those. So we'll go ahead and make 10 lock picks. And unfortunately, it'll do this one item at a time, and it'll say, hey, do you wanna put this in your inventory? So I have to hit enter 10 times. And you'll see it put us all in my inventory. And if we open the message log, which is the capital P key, um, you'll see that we got a message saying that we've leveled up our fab, which we can also check in the app menu, and it says that we're level one fab. So now we should be able to search for the brazier. You'll see it requires a tool with hammering of two or more, which we do not have, and it requires a sheet metal. Now a sheet metal we've already gotten, uh, oh, they're only small. So okay, uh, when you smash items, it tends to give worse returns than if you deconstruct those items. So what we're gonna do is deconstruct these lockers instead of smashing them in hopes of getting a sheet metal. In order to deconstruct, we actually require uh, a hammer and, okay, I can't type, deconstruct, uh, requires a hammer and a screwdriver. So we're gonna look to making those two things right now. So we need something with uh, a level two hammering. So we go Q colon hammer. And you'll see there are only a few things that have a level two hammering. The makeshift hammer is probably the one we're gonna go with. We need a chunk or lump of steel. Uh, actually, I don't know if we can make that. We're gonna go out and look for a rock instead, I think. This requires a stick, 
which we have, uh, a rock, and then cordage of some sort, which we can get as necessary. So for now, let's step outside and let's use our capital V menu to look for ro uh, uh, items nearby, specifically look for a rock. There are no rocks. That is a problem. So instead, are we still wielding the plank? We are not. We dropped the plank. Give me the plank back, please. Let's uh, wield... Nope. Wield a plank. Getting a little out of control here. I thought we could quickly do this, and this is turning into a little bit longer than that. So when you're looking for rocks and you can't necessarily find one, you can find these small boulders and try smashing them, and they smash for rocks. So we'll go ahead and grab a rock and head back. Now we're going to need cordage as well, and previously we used cordage by taking apart the curtains for string which we can do again uh and we're just going to do that we could also cut up these sheets into rags and then into thread which is the best thing to do because thread is less valuable than long strings but for the sake of ease we're just going to tear down another curtain and take the long string i'm going to head back over here we should now be able to make a hammer oh that is not no not key bindings search for hammer we still can't make it Oh, requires short strings. Weird, but okay. We can drop our long string and butcher that into short strings. We'll talk more about butchering and whatnot in the future. You'll see it gave us six strong short strings, so we can now make a hammer. So we'll make the stone hammer, which again has the two hammering quality that we need. So we'll go ahead and make that, and we'll make that out of a heavy stick because that is less valuable, and we will dispose of this. Yes, so we now have a stone hammer. We're also going to need a screwdriver so we can quickly search for screw. And you'll see the screwdriver requires chunks or scrap metal. Uh, so it does require metal, which we do have scrap metal over here. So we'll grab the 13 scrap metal, come back to the light, craft the screwdriver really quick. Uh, we'll use the heavy stick again, dispose, store in inventory. Okay, so now we have a hammer and a screwdriver which are necessary to gather to deconstruct furniture so if we go to the construction menu the asterisk key and we search for deconstruct uh it's also like one of the first options so deconstruct furniture it will prompt us what would we like to deconstruct deconstructing is very important for taking apart things for the most optimal number of materials if we deconstruct this locker for instance you'll see we got eight pipes two sheet metals and three small sheet metals Whereas when we smashed it, what did we get? We got some small sheet metals and scrap metal. That's because smashing it is much less efficient and does not preserve the materials the way that deconstructing does. So we deconstructed this and got a proper sheet metal, which we again can now come over here and craft the brazier because we now have an item with hammering of two or more and we now have a sheet metal. So we can go ahead and craft this. Use the one on my person, please. Store an inventory. And you'll see we're now carrying a brazier. A brazier is just, you've probably seen them in like fantasy movies. It's literally just a little raised platform of metal that you put fire in. Sometimes they're ceramic or whatever, but they're just basically a raised platform that you dump fire in um, or, or firewood in. And then it burns and it's, it's a brazier. It's just an old-fashioned light. Now, in order to use this, we need to activate the item by pressing A which will allow us, you'll see it lists what the item will do when you activate it. So for instance, lock picks, pick a lock. We're gonna go over to the brazier and it says deploy item. And we're gonna deploy this, uh, honestly not here. I actually don't really like it being here. We're gonna come to the corner here and deploy this here alongside the wall. And now that this has been deployed, it actually functions as a fire container. So we can safely throw some wood in there. Just wield it, it doesn't matter. And we can now use capital D to drop onto the brazier, drop the plank, and now if we want to start a fire, we can safely start a fire. We're going to hold off on that because there's really no reason to do that at the moment, but I wanted to show you that this is a safe fire container that you can use in the f evacuee scenario. Most other scenarios, you're probably going to be near a uh, stove of some sort, and stoves are good because they can be used directly as a fire container. You can just build a fire in them, or alternatively, if for whatever reason you want a brazier, you know, because you can carry a brazier around, you kind of have to drag ovens here and there. 
So if you wanted to make a brazier, you can then deconstruct the stove, which will give you sheet metal. So a brazier is a very solid go-to. There are also fireplaces. We talked about the uh, furnaces and the basements of homes, ovens, of course. Um, so there are other fire containers where you can safely start a fire. It really is just one of those things you have to know. Um, I didn't know until like six months ago that ovens worked as a fire container. Um, and then when we got the furnaces, they didn't work for a while. And then someone changed it to where they do now. So this is an example of one of those things that you just kind of have to learn. Brazier is a safe go-to. I use them all the time. The added benefit of a brazier is that you can deploy it wherever you want, and then you can pick it up by examining that. You can take down the brazier, which will make it a collectible item again, and you can pick it up, take it up and downstairs, whereas an oven, you cannot drag downstairs. So if we wanted to set this up in the basement, we have that option. So that's the main appeal of a brazier. Um, and then the other thing I want to show you is the Mark Firewood source. Let's grab a whole bunch of this wood. I'll just haul it over there for the time being, and we'll grab the nails out of there. The other thing of note is Mark Firewood source. So when we create a fire, let's go ahead and make a splintered wood into the fire here. Throw this into the fire. Splintered wood. We'll activate our fire starter and set a fire. You'll see we've successfully lit a fire. Now, if we start reading a book or cooking a food, this fire will go out when it runs out of wood. You see in the description here, it says this is a fire, it will go out soon uh, without extra fuel. And what that means is that we just threw a splinter of wood in there. That's not real like firewood, that's just a splintered piece of wood. That's not gonna last very long. You can manually add as much fire as you want or as much wood as you want, but an easier way to do this is to mark a firewood source so that as you're crafting or reading or whatever, it will automatically refill the fire. So as long as I keep reading and there's wood, it will automatically fill the fire as it needs to so that the fire keeps going. And we do this by pressing the asterisk key for the construction. It's easiest just to search for fire. And you'll see we have this option, mark firewood source. Now, if we mark a tile, it puts down an X in my particular tile set so that we know what tile that is. Um, and we're gonna put that down on top of our wood pile. And this is basically saying, hey, when you need to burn something, pull out of this tile in order to use it as fuel for this fire. And so as long as you're within range of the thing, if I come over here and start reading, uh, it will continually refill our fire. Now you can also manually extinguish a fire by examining the tile it's on. We get this extinguish fire option in case you're getting too hot or it's daylight and you would rather use the daylight instead of the fire. Um, and you can do that and you'll see it refunds a small bit of the wood by saying, hey, this wasn't quite burnt yet. Um, and so we get that wood back. You can exploit that. I recommend you not. It's easier. Wood is very accessible. Just, just go ahead and learn how to source wood. It's not a big deal. But so, yeah, I wanted to cover how to set up a fire for crafting reasons. Um, it, you got to understand the electricity is out in the cataclysm. So once the sun goes down, it'll be black in this building and uh, we were not gonna be able to see in order to craft. We're not gonna be able to read. We're not gonna be able to do anything without light. And so having fire and a fire starting source, which would be our, our matchbook at the moment, is very important to get that by the end of day one. Otherwise you end up sitting in the dark and you don't really have anything to do and you're basically just stuck waiting around until night comes uh, or till night passes or you're tired enough to sleep or whatever. So I wanted to give a quick video about how to set up fire, but man, every time I do one of these videos, it just reminds me of how much more there is to talk about. For example, in this episode, we used hauling, we used the craft, the uh, construction menu, we used, uh, we, we quickly crafted some items, we talked about deconstructing, we butchered. There's so much to talk about in Cataclysm, and uh, man, doing it a little bit at a time is nightmarish, uh, frankly, because I've had a lot of these short episodes now, and there's just like a million more things to talk about. Anyway, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you did, maybe consider liking, commenting, or subscribing. I, of course, will be back with more tutorial Cataclysm content in the near future, and I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next episode.